How's it going everybody? Um, how's it going YouTube, Facebook and Instagram? Um, I hope everybody's having a good day today. I uh, am, to be honest, reluctant to be inside today because it's absolutely stunning out there. Um, I think, uh, well here anyway, it's about 19 degrees. Um, but uh, I, I said I would be here and therefore I am going to be here. Just give me one sec. There we go. Um, so we're all up and running. So, hello there. Uh, Paddy Hoyne, what's the story? Um, the, what I'm going to do today, as, as normal, this seems to be the story of my life at the minute. Um, it's all meetings and whatnot to, um, to try and organise um, um, finishing this year in IADT and then going back next year. So I haven't got much done on this. Um, last week, I got... That ear pretty much finished. I got these lines started putting in. I'm pretty happy with that eye. So what I want to do is shift my brain um, over uh, today to the other side. Now, um, I know it's a bit odd for you. How's it going, Aidan? Um, and Kieran, how's you? Um, I know it's a bit odd for you uh, because when I say left, it could be the right because this is the mirror image. Um, I've tried to uh, flip it, but I think all of these things are designed to uh, show me the, the, the mirror image. So, oh, oh, I'll probably, what are you doing? This is, yeah, this is left hand side, but you see it right hand side, uh, which has been wrecking my brain for ages. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm moving over to this side and I'm equaling up uh, the ear, and that's what I was uh, starting with. I'm going to, uh, this is not right in and around here. I want to get right to uh, to the uh, other eye, but I'd say pretty much what I'm going to get done today is the ear. What I also did was because uh, um, with the reference that I have, I'm looking at him and who's that? I can't even see the um, the, um, the names anymore. Is that Angelica? Um, the what I'm looking at as reference uh, was there's certain details that it isn't giving me. Um, uh, like on Beckett on the reference that I have, you can see the big, uh, big massive lines, but it's not giving me um, uh, the small lines. So what I did was, um, not saying that I look like Beckett or anything like that, um, but uh, what I did was I took a photograph of uh, the side of my face, and um, all I'm looking for there, and I sort of squinched, squinched up a little bit, so it give me the uh, crow's feet. Yeah, I, the similar thing going on. Um, uh, here uh, that Beckett would and so what I have a reference over there you can't see it it's just literally a picture of me and uh, but what's useful and handy for is to, uh, to see it in relation to the lines and wrinkles that come off the face and what I'm looking at is just a, a common pattern and um, I have the same sort of thing going on with his ear uh, his ear as my ear the lines you can see these lines there's lines coming down here. I want to get them in, and then there's lines coming from uh, over here. But they all, if you, if you pretty much looked at it, the, um, about here, from here to there, all the lines. No, they're not in here. And I actually started this, and I was going, this looks wrong. Um, I had the um, the texture lines going across this way. They're not. They actually go down from here at an angle. Uh, that's why I took the photograph, and you can't see that photograph, it's, it's, it's off to the side a bit. But what I'm going to do uh, sort of today is try and get this ear up and running and, uh, and equal to the other ear. Try and get, uh, I don't think I get the eye, but that's what, uh, that's what I'm going to try and do uh, now because I know the way I like to work, and what I like to work is uh, one side um, and then uh, match up the other side. Uh, sometimes I'll work on both at the same time, but very rarely. So I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do is, and I ha uh, is match up this ear with the reference, which I've already done, but it was more blocking it out. And what I want to do is, can you see it? That ear there. That's pretty. It's not finished, but it's nearly finished. And uh, I want to replicate that over onto this side. Not that it's the same, um, but uh, there's. Uh, bits that I've been adding in and getting more detail on on the ear. No, it's on uh, your left. This his right. I know that's really confusing. Um, so what I'm doing as well, and it's one with ears. Ears are a pain in the backside, and um, because I'm looking at straight down the nose, and um, I see a little bit off. This generally uh, ears 
there are funny uh, things, that, um, but they are semi-symmetrical, but there will be one little bit that shifts it off a little bit. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get uh, into the sculpt, but not so much that it looks completely and utterly off. So that's what I'm trying to do at the minute, is match it up to the reference and um, try and get... Um, just when you say symmetry, it needs to be in the right place, but it's not symmetrical in the sense that it's not a mirror image. And um, But there's things that, um, even looking at the reference, you can see the ears finish at the same level. Um, so that's an important thing to be able to see. And, and this, it didn't on this side. So I'm trying to match it up to the other side. So you'll see my head flipping and flipping. Um, it's going from the other side to this side, trying to match it. Hope everybody's good out there. And I know I'm here sculpting, but what the hell are you lot doing? And you should be outside in that beautiful weather. It's gorgeous out there. Absolutely stunning. So I know that, what, um, well unfortunately I can't. But I was going to say straight after this I'll be going out to, to um, make my quarry into a garden. But now I have a little bit of work to do. On the computer. So I don't know if she's on here, um, I forgot to send her a text. The tools, she was asking me, um, Emma was asking me uh, what is the wooden tool that I'm always talking about that is my favourite and it's that one there. This, this is the big brother, this one here. And this is the small one, the one that, um, those two there. This one here is a W21 and I can't, I can't even remember what that one is, but it is, you can see the heads are the same. You see the heads are the same, and uh, um, that there is a do Kemper W21. She was asking me, and I said I would. Um, I didn't text, so hopefully she's here. I'll text her anyway. So W21. Unfortunately, you can't get them in Ireland. You have to. Um, let me see. Can, I'm gonna flip this around so we can see the, what I'm working on and see less of me. Now it's getting. What you can see in this place is that it's getting fairly crammed in here because there's lots of gear into a very small space. How's it going, Mayor? Tail, yeah, no, Paul, definitely, yeah. How's it going, Mayor? Oh, what, what was it supposed to be? Hi, Mayor. So what I'm trying to do is get this um, um, old symmetrical lads and I'm looking at the reference straight in front of me. It's not bad, it really isn't bad, um, but I do want it to get it like the other ear. Not that, not that, the, not that, again, not that ears are, um, not that ears are the s exactly the same, they're not. But there's a general size that they would fall under, and that's what I'm trying to do now is get that get that bridge, not that one for a Now there's these two. It's weird. It's where because especially on this one, not so much on the um, on his right ear. I know this is. I'm gonna have to flip my brain on that one for you. And um, but in here it looks like he's always worn an earring and got ripped off. You've done your part in the live, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. He looks like he, is, he uh, wore earrings at one stage, and not to my knowledge, but um, with all the wrinklage that was going that's going on in here, it uh, looks like he got the uh, earring pulled out of his head. Mayor, I t uh, uh, what's the story? I only glanced at. Um, uh, Bram Stoker, what's the story of Bram Stoker? Is it was his anniversary yesterday? Was it? Is that what what you were saying? I, I, um, I wasn't a hundred percent. On that one. So lads, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me while I'm through in this up. Uh, as I said last week, I love doing ears. And ears are—they're hard to do, and they're really hard to do because um, there's 
there's an awful lot, not that a, fa a face in general is hard to do, um, but an ear, there's an awful lot going on in an ear, and uh, you can get lost in them, and um, there's diff all sorts of different planes happening at the same time. And what I've noticed for the last, well, since I started doing this, but I noticed myself doing it in 1897. Okay. Yesterday was the anniversary of Dracula. Cool. Oh, first being published. Excellent. The, um, what I've noticed myself doing is, as soon as I'm sculpting somebody of a particular age, um, and I'm sculpting ears, I've been looking at people's wrinkles, and I've been... Um, looking at people's ears. Luckily, uh, they're my own people, so um, they're used to me staring into the distance or um, at their ears. But you, when you start doing this type of stuff, it becomes sort of hyper aware of what's around you, and you start looking. Oh, that's a cool wrinkle. Keep that in me head. Or that's that's what a, a, a an ear looks like. Because generally. We don't see our own ears, um, so uh, we have to look at other people's uh, ears. And when we see it, it's a mirror image. Uh, like I'm looking at a mirror image of me now, and it looks slightly off, um, but it's what I'm used to. His father had a direct link to Bram Stoker. Mad. I'd say you did. I'd say you did go. Bless you, Mary. That's Mary's doing. Uh, I'm, I, I am right in saying, saying this. Um, a PhD in. Would I be right in saying vampire law? Would I be right in saying that? And therefore, that's. That's why um, they were talking about Bram Stoker. Mad. What's it? It was. What is it? What's what's that thing called? Um, Something degrees of separation that we're only so many people away from. It doesn't matter who, any, anybody in the world. We're only so many people away. But this, the gap between here and here, there's something funny going on there. So either this is not being pushed far enough out, out that way, um, or this is not far enough in. And I think there's an element of, of. An element of that, so we're going to pair that back a bit. Now, what's difficult as well, lad, is that I have lots of reference around, and in every you look at one, especially if some of them are him of different ages. Um, when you're doing ears, pick one. Six degrees of separation. That's it. Um, um, with ears, pick one reference uh, of, uh, well, you can pick a few different references, okay, but pick an age um, of when that, uh, uh, of a photograph when that, uh, the, uh, of, uh, when that photograph was taken, um, because our ears get bigger and they droop, um, so do our noses. Uh, so if we're doing a, a study or, or a sculpt or whatever, from reference, um, with those things, you need to uh, don't get confused. Uh, like I have one there, he looks like he's in his thirties. Then I've one here, he definitely looks like he's in his six seventies, probably later. Um, they're not the same, so pick one reference, or at least the same age. Now, I think this needs to go out as well. Now what's nice about doing these things, um, especially over, well, over the length of time that I've been doing it, is you, you know, I started this in the, um, when we went in, sorry, I'm just looking up reference, I'm getting confused. Yeah, um, I started this when I went into quarantine, and the nice thing about it being over a long period of time, you get to see what I call them mistakes. Well, maybe no. Let me say they haven't gone. They haven't gone to where they need to go yet. So therefore, uh, I've had time to look and correct. 
which is really really nice and um, there's a dude uh, I've mentioned before he's doing Princess Leia at the minute his name is Richard Martin and um, at the beginning um, yeah, I was being critical not that I wouldn't be critical Jesus um, it wouldn't be like me at all um, it didn't look like Princess Leia um, no, it looked beautiful it was a stunning sculpt but uh, I've seen a recent one and oh, the time has gone into it and it's uh, it's just it's just unreal um, and, and I would say extremely satisfying to get it, for him to be able to get it to that level at that stage and I suppose this is the same for me that well he's starting well in my head uh, he's starting to look like Beckett um, you probably want to after all this length of time I think I'll add on to this as well narrow always trust the reference slides if it's not if like, and that reference in front of me is the right is the actual size of this so I could even get um, a, a calipers which I probably will do if I can find them um, calipers these are sculpting calipers and I could measure it going to measure it off and if it isn't it ooh, it is now if it isn't it then there's something off there's something wrong and I tell you there's nothing like satisfaction when you actually oh no that that's off it's nothing uh, like it when you put a calipers up against your reference bring it down onto uh, your sculpt and it's the same very very satisfying now it's lucky we weren't on live uh, about five minutes before I went on live and the courier arrived and my dog went absolutely Ape had an absolute conniption, and um, so, and uh, the it was it was like one of those Monty Python scenes where everybody around the house is uh, shaking their hands up in the air and telling the dog shut up, um, and it won't. So I'm glad that didn't happen while well, I was on live. Just pre warn you now, if the dog goes absolutely completely nuts, um, the courier is here. Which is happening regu more regular because we're uh, obviously um, in lockdown. So, is there anybody sculpting out there? I know that th there's actually a, a wee girl from England, and I have to get back to her. She sent me her. Um, she's in the college in England, I think near Bolton. Um, I have to get back to her. She sent me an image of her sculpt, lovely sculpt of an alien. Said, um, well, when am I not busy? Now, I probably won't today be able to, uh, uh, actually, no, there's no way I'll be. I um, won't be getting on to uh, texturing or anything like that today. But um, there was a few people who were wondering would I show a close-up version of texturing and uh, I will, I'll show, I'll show that but I'm not today, it's not, it's not ready for this, is, it's not ready for it, not, not yet yeah. You're still sculpting trees and are you like me that you have a never-ending plan that it doesn't have to be done for a particular time or do you have a deadline? Uh, what you're not seeing lads is I'm actually standing today because I don't know well, I don't know why but mommy tippy does because this fell is huge and I unfortunately cannot draw I have dropped my easel to its minimum so um, something I always wanted all I wanted for Christmas was with another two inches uh, in me height would have been great.
The dog is going crazy because he doesn't know where your voice is coming from. My, vo my voice is it, where it's coming from. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, that's not right. So there's bits here, obviously, you probably can't see them. Um, I need to move around to here. Um, it's all craggy and whatnot in here. I've never even uh, touched it, I'd say. So it's time to get all of that sorted. I love that sound. We were talking about burnishing last week, and I think it was Joseph was saying I was talking about burnishing and burnishing. Because I was thinking about this later, and I was going, "Did I give the right information there?" And I did. What well, what burnishing is, and like usually, it's like back in I, I've seen sculptors do burnishing with a, a spoon, the back of a spoon. And uh, it is uh, what it's used for, uh, and it would have been used in pottery, um, is for literally smoothing, smoothing your clay or your sculpt or your pot. Um, but when we're doing something that's like hyper realistic with loads of texture and stuff like that, we're still burnishing. But what we will be, what we'll be doing is burnishing, and you'll hear it here. Uh, burnishing over lines you hear that click 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 oh. and um, it's still burnishing um, but it's smoothing out but we're using the technique of burnishing to, um, to not smooth necessarily smooth out the uh, wrinkles but to actually give wrinkles gravity and let them fall on top of each other yeah, it's fairly manky in there I see in there Now, what is actually happening, I think that's why it's craggy, is that there's a little bit of the armature exposed. Now, that's one thing I was going to talk about with armatures. I know, I know for a fact, this ain't going anywhere. Um, you need to make damn well sure. Um, I, yeah, you're right. I never grew since I fell out of a tree. That's a whole story in itself. Um, thanks. Thank you very much, Mayor, for bringing that one up. The um, make sure that what was I going to say? Armature. Make sure you, your armature is the first thing you're going to make. And um, if you did sculpt the skull with me, the armatures that I do are similar to, similar to the sculpt the skull we talked about it. Um, but obviously the material isn't carved. Um, it is um, uh, in this case 16 mil, six, ooh, 12 mil MDF. Um, Going there. Um, 16 mil in the F. So that together, and it, it, there's a cross inside it, so it's actually very, very strong. It's at this stage, uh, believe you me, that you're glad that you, uh, well, I'm glad that I did a strong amateur because I think there is nearly. 60 pounds of, I don't know what that is in um, uh, modern money, uh, 60 pounds of Chavant on top of this. So he's fairly heavy. So I'm bloody glad that the armature is, uh, is happy out. This is not bad actually, yeah. Um, you see me going back and forth all the time. That's the problem with the size of this thing. To actually equal something out, you're moving your head over and back, over and back, over and back. Let's start back on this thing. So that's, uh, since I brought up Sculpt the Skull, I haven't forgotten about that, um, I just have been busy. Uh, what I want to do is finish mine, and what I want, Rebecca Bustos, what's the story? Um, Claire McCauley, how's it going? Did you get on to them with your stuff? Tell them to see where the hell's my latex. 
Um, I haven't forgotten about Sculpt to Skull. Uh, I want to finish mine and um, put more detail into it. Um, and then, um, but the next thing I'm going to do when I actually get some time, I know a lot of people have, uh, well, actually, unfortunately, too much time on their hands. I don't have a huge amount. Um, so when I have a little bit more, I'm going to do a moulding uh, workshop. Um, on how to mold it. Now there's only be a simple one, um, a simple mold. I uh, would we'll do only be doing a block mold, but um, we'll talk about and I'll show you different things of uh, what I use to make a two-part silicone mold. Um, um, I am going to use a degasser, so you'll understand that as well. So that'll be coming up. Oh, the resending it. Good. Like Jesus Christ, that's the wire. You can see what I'm doing with Facebook or might not. Sorry, a message comes now. What I've been getting a lot of is people sending me messages. I want to do this, not too sure how to do it. Um, can you tell me? And where will I get the materials? I think that was one that's going in now. How you Paul Rossiter? And uh, Paul, when you send your email, um, I think I'm right in saying this. Uh, your daughter's is she thirteen? Um, did she enjoy doing the scope of school? I know there's no way I might. Um, daughter would be interested in doing that. Now, she would be happy out, well as I was talking earlier in another life, doing a, an, I think it's called a Nithla from Harry Potter. Harry Potter obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. Jessica, what's the story? It'd be nice to get these ears, well both sides finished, and I need to sort of work, not 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 necessarily fix it, but there's just a little bit more to do on his, his left eye. And then what would be nice then is um, all of this area, including the forehead, I can start um, doing the texture on it. Um, I haven't really done it on the forehead other than blocking it out, but I think once I start going into the texture, that's when I can actually start putting, putting the stuff in. Now, I haven't even thought about his neck, or anything like that, and I think one of his muscles is wrong, and needs to come around here, and slope, slope in more, they, they, I think it comes out too far here, I was just looking at a reference there, and um, it comes a little bit too far out, but that's easy to rectify. I think it's it like I don't think it's a problem with you know when you see something you go on, oh that's not right. Um look at it and correct it, absolutely correct it. But uh, don't be ber berating yourself over, over it being wrong. Christ almighty, it is hard enough. Hey Marsali, what's the story? I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I don't know if anybody saw saw this um, a post I put out on um, I think I don't know a couple of days ago. It was 
Uh, now I know lads, I'm only, I'm only putting stupid amounts of clay on, but I want to get it, I want to get it right. Um, it, the post I put up was I completely and utterly forgot that in 2000, um, I need some more too. Uh, in 2000, um, we made two oversized bins for a uh, Samuel Beckett play, um, um, but the play it was uh, end game. And uh, it wasn't it actually. It, it was uh, it was filmed like a film, um, so that that's where it was up on Facebook and Instagram. So that must be when the obsession started, which is pretty weird. questions for me when you have me here and like when I did that thing um, like I knew who Samuel Beckett was but I really you know I wasn't in my early, very early 20s and um, I'm sure I wouldn't have back and known this really Samuel Beckett's work uh, at all. I do now, um, being part of design for stage and screen and whatnot and being around people, production designers, theatre heads, um, but geez, I hadn't got a clue um, back then. I can know now though. And it's cool now to think that you are part of, well, in some small way of um, working on something as iconic as that. I'm actually doing a post at the minute and the, uh, what it is is when we were working on um, the Count of Monte Cristo we made the balloon basket and I just I, I was looking through stuff and that's when I found the other thing um, and um, so I'm going to post that up too. Sculpting a skull was the longest she's been out of her bedroom for two months. You're kidding me. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's just savage. Excellent. Well, then it was worth doing so. Absolutely. That's cool. I like that. Now. That's hard. Man. Two months. I'd say it was good for you, too, to be doing something with her. So keep your eyes out for um, that post on um, and what I'm trying. To, um, uh, it, it was an absolutely mental, mental, mental job. Um, the um, and it was not what we expected at all. And um, I've I've written it down in the post. It, please excuse the length of the post, but it actually is a long story. And um, oh my God, we could have lost everything on that gig. We didn't realize it. Uh, we didn't like when you're working on a gig, um, sometimes, and at that time we were working from gig to gig to gig. And uh, when Count of Monte Cristo came along, um, we didn't even know who the hell was. Um, I didn't even know Richard Harris was playing uh, in it. Um, and I was making something for him until we went to the canteen and we saw him. And um, I was going, What's he doing on this? And he's he using the yoke of the sword that you make. And I go, Oh, okay. Um, we made, we did loads of stuff, um, so we, we didn't realise how big a gig it was. And we're in, and we're in the middle of it, and if the gig, that bit that we were doing, if it went wrong, it means we packed up and go to another country. But it didn't. It worked out perfectly. Again, what's nice when you get to the stage on an ear. Little nodes or nodules. Nice getting them in.
Hi Blanca. What kind of clay are you using? I'm using Chavant. I'm using Chavant medium and it is what they call it red but it's more like a terracotta. I like it because it sort of looks or mimics real clay or the red clay and that's what I would have used when I was a kid so I like it. The other one is green. I don't particularly like the green um, so that's why I use this one. Um, and when is it is is, is oh, what? This this does not dry. Um, this is not a drying clay. This is an oil based clay, so it never will dry. Um, it will get really hard. Um, and I have a sculpt. Where is it? Can you see it? Where is it? Oh, it's just there. You can't really see it. Um, I have a sculpt over there that I don't know a couple good couple of years old, and um. She's. It's really, really hard, but it's it. It doesn't dry. Uh, this stuff here, you have to heat up, um, to use. And therefore, you probably can't see it now because he's in the way. Uh, there's an oven behind him. Uh, if you want to an air drying clay, I don't use air air drying stuff myself. Uh, if I'm going to sculpt something, usually I know I'm going to mold it. Um. Or I'm just sculpting it for fun. I always disliked. Look, people have looked at this and gone, "Are you mental using that amount of, uh, of Chavant? It uh, costs a fortune." And um, and I'm going, uh, "Well, number one, I had it. It's the only thing I had. Uh, actually, I didn't. I didn't have any um, wet clay, and I certainly didn't have any wet clay. Wet clay. If you're going to use um, wet clay, um, it is." So for what we do, it's really, really nice. Um, the shrinkage rate on it uh, is a hell of a lot lower than it normally would be. And it was designed by uh, for um, Disney. So WED, W-E-D, Walt E. Disney. That's why it's called um, WED clay. Well, that's what it's called, isn't it? And it, uh, it probably is. It's got a lot of moisture, moisture content. And it's, it's it's actually really good for when you're doing fiberglass molds and stuff like that as well because it has low moisture in it. You still have to seal it though. So uh, to stop this from cracking, I don't have to stop it from cracking because it doesn't crack. Um, but then, can you do anything with it afterwards? Um, you'd have to if you're going to do anything with this afterwards, you'd have to mold it. That's the unfortunate thing. If you want, I uh, know das. Uh, if you want to use a clay that air dries, but um, to my knowledge, DAS has a fibre in it, and that's actually what stops it from cracking. Um, but I hate this stuff. I absolutely hate this stuff. Um, but hey, that's just me. So I'm just trying to figure this out. And in here, you can't see it, and I can just about see it. Very craggy in here. I've never even looked in here, so I'm just going to try and fix that. And there's also something weird happening here, and I don't think that looks right. No. No, it comes into more of a point, which it does over there as well. So that's good. At least we know that. Yep. So I hope that asked, answered your question, Blanca. Sean Gallagher, what's the story? Alice, how's it going? Alice, have you got a whole new business going on now? If it, lads, if you haven't seen um, Alice's new business, she's making masks, which are really cool. They're tie-dyed masks. Look gorgeous. And um, knowing Alice, I would safely say that they're it's all natural cotton and stuff like that. Would I be wrong?
So I'm going to leave the, the, in, right in there, it's really craggy, but you can't see that. I am going to do it up, and um, we're not going to waste my time doing that now. I just want to get the form right, um, and so I'm going to concentrate on around here, getting that right. Now you, yeah, you can see that. So it is a bit craggy in here, but um, I think this is more important to get right than in there. And inside here, that well, there is a general shape to it, absolutely. But as long as it's smooth, it'll be grand. And with his age, I guarantee you, there was hair in there. So you're not going to even see fully into where I think it's craggy. Now it's not. I'm not going to leave it craggy. I am going to smooth it out. What's the story, Rob? Now, let me see. What are you saying here? Can I exp this here, um, uh, I am not going to paint it, um, this is just, the, uh, well not just, but it's, it, it is just a sculpt. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mould it and um, I have to figure out what I'm going to do, how, how to do that. Um, not figure it out, but I am at present in my kids play, uh, playroom, taking it over and made a studio. And uh, my kids are about 10 feet away, so I can't use fiberglass or anything like that. Um, so I am um, thinking about doing a jasmineite mould. Jasmineite is a... If you think of jasmineite as... A, if you look at plaster and you look at um, uh, like fiberglass resin, so jasmineite is in between. Um, and that's what I'm half thinking of doing for this because... Uh, it's not that it's not smelly, but um, it's um, anybody out there that's used uh, fiberglass, well, you know what I'm talking about. My wife would absolutely kill me. Where is that? Is it to... So I'm not going to paint him. Um, what my intention is, I'm going to do a mould. Um, I haven't figured, fully figured out it yet, um, but prob probably will be um, jasmineite. It's not wrong with jasmineite. Um, uh, the problem with jasmineite uh, though is that uh, it has no flex, and uh, something of this size um, could be an issue. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, getting it off uh, the this this piece here. If there's no flex in the mold, um, as in the material, I don't mean the actual mold. The, the material I'm using it could snap, and jasmineite has an awful habit of that and after we're doing this amount of work I don't want this to snap. Now what I could also do is do a silicone mold with a jacket, jasmine jacket, but that's it. That's expensive. The, the reason why I would do a fiberglass mold is cheap, uh, it's strong, it's reliable. I could do an epoxy mold as well. But anyway, um, once I get the mold done, um, I might, might be able to Jeez, you, could, you, know, you could do fiberglass outside, especially in this weather. You'd have to watch it in this weather, actually. Like I've done that before, and um, depending on how much catalyst you put in, the, flip, uh, the bowl the bowl is going fire. Especially the heat. It's amazing. But uh, what eventually I would do is get it out in um, silicone. Um, so I'll have a mould and I'll pour silicone in. I'm only going to do a slush mould. And I'm going to uh, then make a core on the inside, but I'm going to make a very simple core with expandable polyurethane foam. And um, so will your core, no, no, I'm not going to use jasmine for the core, I'm going to use expandable polyurethane foam uh, for the core. Uh, so once I have the mould, which is a negative form of this, and I will pour silicone into it. Now I'm saying things very fucking simply. Um, the uh, slush it around, build up the thickness, and then uh, obviously I'll still be left with a cavity because I'm only going to put about what maybe five mil, um, maybe more in spots of silicone, and that's what I usually do with all the busts that I do uh, the silicone ones, and then just fill the inside, slush it, and fill the inside with polyurethane foam. Works brilliantly absolutely brilliantly you just have to but you have to be careful of 
with the polyurethane foam is, uh, but I don't have to worry with on this mold, is that if the mold was encased, as in um, it's fully enclosed, and let's say I have an injection port or I have a, a, a small pouring port, the pressure of the uh, um, the expandable foam could actually blow the port, blow the, um, the actual mold apart. Um, where this one, the whole bottom end, right underneath them, is going to be open. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, now what, what I would do is um, slush it and build up the outside uh, and the foam and just build the foam up as I go instead of um, mixing a whole whack of stuff and banging it in and exploding out. I, I, I know guys have done this with um, a slush with Jesmine, I, 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 you see that's the problem. With the, the, my issue is I don't want to do a Jesmonite mold. Um, the Jesmonite, uh, if anybody knows it, uh, it's great stuff but heavy, uh, but no flex. Um, whereas uh, fiberglass is extremely smelly and very toxic. Um, it's the styrene in it that just kills you, uh, literally. And, and then the acetone for cleaning the brushes. Like, like there's nothing, nothing nice about it, but it will make a really lightweight mold. Uh, very strong mold. There will be a bit of flex in it, um, so um, I might go feck it in the end and um, call upon you, Aiden. You can come down with me. <laughs> I know. I that that I, I I don't want to do a Jasmine Night mold, and I wouldn't do it. I'm just thinking of not killing my kids. And um, but by the time I get this finished, I might have somewhere that I can go to. And that there is a bit small. Be another loop to it. Yeah, cool. So, we got a loop to it. So, all of these loop tools will make myself a fine dish. Well, if you know how to make a tool, let's say you buy a tool and that and it costs a lot of money, if you know how to make it, well, you know how to fix it. So, you definitely be up for that. Well, I'd be up for it as well. Maybe we could do it over the summer sometime. And if anybody else is up for it, um, we'll run a bus. No, no, not that one. That'd be cool. Doing a course in fiber glass resin. And um, so I, what I'm doing here is. Um, I'm just pairing the, can you see, you can, yeah, pairing this back because the ear is not that thick, let me see, let's see like, um, now what I've had to do with this ear, because the ears are, they are a bit of a pain, um, and uh, people have a tendency to sculpt them flat with the head, which I did, um, and then I slit it and pulled it out. The other ear was too far down, so I had to slip the whole thing go, uh, uh, off and go Van Gogh on him and, um, he, um, and move it up. But that's the beauty with this. If it's wrong, uh, fix it. It can be fixed. Like, there's very little that can't be fixed. Now, the stipulation on that would be um, there's very little that can't be fixed, but it is going to take possibly time. Now, not, again, I'm not going to spend bucket loads on the back here. Um, I just want to see a bit there, Mikey. So, if anybody's like me, my um, by the end of this, I'm probably going to have a prize-winning garden and about 20 David, uh, um, um, Samuel Beckett, not David Beckett. Uh, that's a different fella. Yeah. It's actually very thin here, and what would be really cool, especially here, this is a, um, um, where is it? Let me see. Let me see. There, it's very, very thin, and it's that thin that it's, the light shines through it. That would be really nice to get um, with the silicone. Let you see the light shining through. Let me just 
this is well thick. A good bit has to come off this, but that's okay. So lads, we were, I think we were about 15 minutes a week? 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, ask me now. Or think about one, and you can ask me next Saturday. Because I'll be doing exactly the same thing next Saturday. Um, I'll go out live at 3 on Wednesdays and Saturday. And as I said, if you did do Sculpt the Skull, I am going to do a moulding session. Um, and the machines I would use um, to do it. Um, like, there are a lot of people who are watching this right now who know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, there's a lot of people who don't. They don't even know what a feckin' vacuum chamber is um, and where to get them. There's this mysterious thing about some of this stuff that we uh, use. Um, the, and people are going, where do you get this stuff? The problem a lot, uh, uh, with a lot of this stuff is you don't, we, we get. The machine that we use is usually made for something else. Um, and uh, we've just come along and gone, you know what, that's really cool, that takes, that takes out this. Um, and actually, a lot of stuff, when I was doing this first, couldn't afford a vacuum chamber. Vacuum chamber, all it does is it takes bubbles out of things. It is mainly silicone. And um, I won't answer, I have to answer that question. Um, and the only place that we could get uh, um, to that had a vacuum chamber, we were making um, randomly. We were making a, a, a crystal, you know, you remember this, uh, uh, what was it, hexagonal ash trays that were in pubs, uh, the big, big one. We didn't make one then, totally uh, bubble free, and it was to smack off somebody's head. And um, so we had to make one of them. But, uh, it's medical prototyping is a, a lot of this stuff is in and we've gone that's cool let's use that and uh, so i'll show when um where where you get this stuff where's the cheapest where's the best uh, when i'm doing that demo have you ever had to submerge a nut in silicone very random question i know i need a little bit more than that a nut what is, what nut is it and what's it for and um, are you taking the pee? If you're serious, tell me more information. And if you are serious, that's a fairly random question. Now. Cool. But if I was to, it would depend on what knot it is. If it's a monkey knot, um, a peanut, it's hollow on the inside so it's going to float. To put dowel into a pub. Oh, a nut! As in a nut and washer, not a peanut. Um, ah, so I assume, right, if you're going to puppeteer something, that um, you want to put a dowel in a, or attach a dowel to um, the puppet. So, uh, and to answer your question, yes, I have. Um, um, but what you have to be clear about first is I am assuming that on your puppet you've got a skeleton or some form of um, um, framework inside it. And you're saying that uh, I'm assuming that there's silicone on the outside. But what you want to do is put a nut on the inside so you just twist a, a, a threaded rod in so you can puppeteer it. So the problem is not the silicone. The problem is you need to attach the nut onto, a, let's call it the skeleton, the skeleton or the armature. Um, I've done that in stop motion all the time. Look, I like nearly every stop motion character that's done in silicone will have some form of nut on the inside and um, you... Uh, uh, when you before you cast the silicone the nut is already on the actual armature um, and whether it be uh, uh, acrylic using acrylic to stick it on or that it's actually welded on um, that's what I would be doing I don't know if I'm answering your question though um, but I would be putting the nut 
because if you don't put the nut on something and it's just on the silicone, it's just going to come back out. Um, so, um, but what I do do is that when this nut is on the actual armature, when you pour the silicone on, and um, the silicone will go into the actual threads of the nut, then you can't get the actual thread bar, threaded bar inside. So what you do is you pack uh, the clay um, into the into the nut. So that, uh, and then you uh, measure or know, or, or I would have a drawing with measurements, and um, I would know where that nut is. Then I would cut into the um, silicone. Uh, sil silicone will self-release when I take the knife back out, and I can stick the threaded bar in. It will go into um, the nut because all I've plugged it with is wax, um, or I could stick something in there and pick the, um, uh, the wax out. Generally, with that little bit of mint wax, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, so you could stick in the um, the dowel, use it, puppeteer it, take it out, it'll self seal. Um, if you look, uh, like the last gig I did with, um, with Ega Morgan, she had stuff up. Uh, was it Ega Morgan? Oh, no, it was a silicone one. Let me see. All of the puppets. Yeah, Ega Morgan. Yeah, well, Ega Morgan. Um, uh, like any puppet, a uh, stop motion puppet will have a ball and socket joint, um, well most of them, um, well high end ones do, and um, you have to get into that's essentially a nut. So um, that's how you do it, is nut goes onto the armature, plug the nuts, then cast the silicone, slip the silicone, get the uh, uh, clay out of the nut, and then insert the thread bar. And hopefully that answers your question in a very long and roundabout way. So we have three minutes, lads. It's attached to Formex, yeah, um, which is, uh, uh, I admit, a bit dodgy. I would 100%, uh, maybe even 200% agree with you, um, but it's probably all you had. Um, so if it's attached to that, uh, have you cast it yet? Like, if it's not cast yet, what you could do is do a, um, a hard fixing. Uh, I would assume it's it's glued. You could do a hard fixing and um, drill uh, through the side of the nut and um, put wire attaching the nut onto the Fomex as well. I've done that a few times too. Yeah, and plug plug the um, the nut with um, clay. What I, actually, what, uh, and some people don't like doing that because they feel sometimes that the clay uh, will inhibit the silicone socket from going off. Uh, plumber's tape, you know, plumber's tape, you ever see it? Uh, white tape, they'd uh, use that too. So, lads, we're coming up on the hour, and um, thank you all for joining in. I have to say, uh, as I say every week, I'm very grateful that people turn up. If you didn't, um, I'd be talking to the wall. Um, and your questions keep my head going, and I'm delighted to hear that people like um, Paul and his daughter um, found Sculpt to Skull um, so useful. And if you want to join Sculpt to Skull, it's up on the website, go up, sign up, um, have a go. If you have any questions about it, send me a text, send me an email. Um, and don't forget, lads, uh, YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, and uh, any of the posts or this posts share it around and uh, give us a like give us a comment and um, if you have any questions that you want me to answer like that bizarre one of uh, I didn't think uh, you probably didn't think I would uh, I had an answer for that one um, but uh, uh, send send me a message if you want with a question or ask it live uh, when I'm doing the lives um, it's nice when people ask questions so I'm going to continue on with it. Well, not today. It's beautiful. Day. It's beautiful weather out there. So I'm going to say goodbye, and I'm uh, again extremely grateful for everybody turning up. So I'm going to say goodbye to YouTube and switch you off first. And.